Hey you guys, it's Tuesday evening. I thought I would get on here and answer some of the questions um, that Tiffany had for me in the video that I did earlier today about working out your sets, your reps, increasing weight, decreasing weight. Um, but some of those questions that she had um, were what were my personal ups and downs with macros, um, what was it like when I first started out, uh, the workouts, um, progressing with, um, progressing with, um, strength and then just how was it like working out when I was heavier. So, um, big, big difference between what I did and then what you guys are doing. So when I started out, I was completely solo. I was not a nutritionist. Um, when I first started losing weight, I basically started to cut down the amount of calories that I was eating. So I was overeating constantly. Um, I was eating anywhere on some days from like 1600 to the upwards of like 3000 calories. Um, I was definitely an overeater. I could still be an overeater now if I did not have as much discipline as I currently have, but I was definitely um, a chronic overeater. Everything that I did was tied around food. When I was happy, I ate. When I was bored, I ate. Um, when I was tired, um, frustrated, sad, mad, whatever, everything was around food. I was always looking for that next meal. I was always looking for that next bite. And I had spent most of my life um, basically drowning my emotions, happy, sad, mad, bad, good, whatever, all around food. Everything was about food. Food controlled me. I was not in control of food. It basically ran um, my life into the ground until I found myself wanting to lose weight. I had a toddler. I was at the heaviest weight that I had ever been um, from the time that I was 18 on. Um, I pretty much had always been well over 200 pounds, but I got to the breaking point and knew that I wanted to change the way that I looked and, the ch and change the way how I, how I felt. And it was not for other people. It wasn't for something that I needed to achieve, somewhere that I needed to go, something that I needed to get into. But I wanted to do it for me. And when I was ready to do it, that's when I was all the way in. So I started trying to control how much I ate. So I made myself be accountable for how many calories I was eating every day. Um, I didn't have my fitness pal then. And I was using a journal and a notebook to document everything that I was eating and I would look and see how many calories I was eating every day. So I actually started just right now when I was currently eating, saw that I was well, you know, overeating and the amount of fat and stuff that I was eating, it was just ridiculous. I probably was eating more than 100 grams of fat on a regular basis, um, but I started looking at everything that I was eating and I started eating less. I did not start eating healthy, macros did not exist. Um, I just started eating less. So I went from eating less to then starting to replace some of the smaller portions of what I was eating with good things. So I went from eating like maybe two bowls of chips a day to a half a bowl of chips and then I replaced those chips with carrots eventually. So it was a progression and it wasn't like I woke up one day, I had a macro plan and I was eating 80% clean and 20% healthy. I had to like totally change how I was eating step by step. I've done the Atkins diet. I've done slim fast. I've done meal replacement shakes where you just drink shakes all day. Um, I've done Weight Watchers twice, twice or three times. Um, I've done 1200 calorie counting diets, 1400 calorie counting diets. I've done um, everything, but in the mix, I made the transition from eating unhealthy things to healthy things. Growing up, the only vegetables that I ate were fried potatoes and corn, and most of the time that was fried too, or you know, like slathered in butter. 
but I wasn't eating salad. I wasn't eating green beans. I ate those things if they were served to me at someone else's house. I ate those things if they were given to me um, at school as a kid, but in my own house with my husband, I was not cooking a green beans. I didn't even eat asparagus for the first time until th three years ago. I wasn't making salads, and if I did, th these were like four and 500 calorie salads outside of the food that I was eating. Um, I didn't start eating chicken breast. I started with chicken thighs. I baked chicken thighs. We ate the skin. It was broiled. It was crispy. Then I moved to taking the thighs and taking the skin off of them and eating them. At the time, um, we did not have much money. We were in college with, um, you know, a two-year-old and we were both young. Um, see, at that time, well, how old was I? Um, when I was like really serious about, about losing weight, I was like 24. So this was like 22. Um, we couldn't hardly even afford chicken breast. Like chicken breast was a luxury. And now chicken breast, I think, is even cheaper than it was back then. And it's more readily available. But it was like chicken thighs that we're eat, we were eating. Like we progressed from not frying chicken thighs to baking and broiling um, chicken thighs. So like it was a huge progression. It wasn't like I woke up and then I started eating right. But I slowly progressed from eating more to, you know, overeating to eating less to exercising and I did not even get a gym membership until 2013. So I had lost um, 120 pounds in 16 months and I had lost all of the weight by, let me see what month that was. I think it was, maybe it was May 2006. Um, or was it farther than that? Hold on, you guys. I'm thinking of these numbers in my head. It was 2006 when I had lost 120 pounds, pretty much all of the weight that I wanted to lose. I got down to about 160 pounds, um, which is, you know, definitely more than what I weigh now. And then three months after that, I got pregnant. So I got pregnant with my son. I gained 40 pounds. I got up to like 199 pounds or something like that. And then I felt like Okay, I got to do this again. I lost 120 pounds. Everybody watch. This is well before the People magazine. Um, and not everybody knows this. And this is not in People magazine. But I lost 120 pounds. And then I had another kid. So I gained 40 pounds. I felt like I had something to prove to myself. I didn't want to let my friends or family members down that knew I had lost so much weight. And I didn't want to be that story. Well, that girl lost all that weight. And then she had another baby. And then she gained all this weight back after she wanted to be small all of her life. Well, I kid you not, I lost all of that weight in 12 weeks um, in a healthy way by eating well, um, proper nutrition, and exercising. And I got back down um, to a, I think I had a picture. I don't know if it's in here. I got back down to um, 160 pounds by 2008. And then I had periods where I gained 10 or 15 pounds, lose 10 or 15 pounds, but I never got over 160. But then I started Herbalife in 2014, weighing 158 pounds. And then I lost um, about um, 20 pounds in 10 weeks time and that's when I started using the hashtag for half my size and people magazine found me so I lost 120 pounds I had a kid and I had a kid I had my son then I lost more weight had some up and ups and downs and I lost more weight again and then I got to people magazine so basically all my life the weight went up like this and then I finally lost the weight, then I got pregnant, then I lost the weight, and then it was like this. So my point from A to B was not, you know, one straight line. It was up and down. It was like a hilly 
uh, roller coaster ride and I've learned so much along the ride and then in 2014 I started helping other people and then in 2015 is when I got my nutrition certification. I started counting macros back in 2014. Um, it was the end of the year and I was completely relearning how to do my nutrition. I had hit a weight loss plateau and I wanted to take my body to the next level. So as I described to you in one of the videos earlier this week, I had said, if you do cardio only, um, if you're not lifting weights, all you're going to become is a smaller version of yourself. I became a smaller, flabbier version of myself. I did not have the muscle tone that I wanted. I had lost 140 pounds and I was like flabby. I'm 5'1". Um, that skin tries to bounce back as best as it can, but I lost all of that weight and my body was not the way that I wanted to be. When you are focusing on macros and lifting, um, you end up changing your body in a far different way than when you're just calorie counting alone. Um, the nutrition actually helps to give your body a, pl a platform to actually grow more muscle, lose more fat, and then the physique changes that you encounter are because you are sculpting your body with a weightlifting program. So I didn't get serious till 2014 about losing, about, um, uh, lifting weights. I started the weightlifting. I learned macros and I started on what you would call a completely bro program. So I ate 100% clean on my macro plan in the beginning. It was very hard to um, stick with macros. It was hard because I had to relearn what I was thinking. I was always calorie counting, not just um, you know, counting the macros like I do now, but I had to reconfigure my brain. Um, and this is even from the standpoint of being a scientist. Like I had to reconfigure how I was thinking about food. I had to reconfigure how I was thinking about calories, um, calories in, calories out, fuel for my muscles, fuel for my body, um, eating more to actually lose weight. When I started counting macros, I was eating about 1,200 calories a day and not losing any weight. At the highest point of my macro counting, um, I was eating about 1,800 to 1,900 calories per day because I rebuilt my metabolism and I ate more and I went from 138 pounds um, down to 120 pounds from doing the macro counting and being very intentional about my weightlifting program. So I got serious about lifting in the gym in 2014. All of the weight that I lost was at home, me pushing myself, doing Tybo tapes, jumping rope, that was those were the only things that I was doing. I had a couple of dumbbells. I didn't know how to lift. I didn't know how to do anything. I walked in the gym, no confidence. I got on the treadmill every single day for about three months. And then I started getting on the weightlifting machines. And then I started eventually progressing to free weights. It took me about nine months to get to free weights. So I am trying to push you guys to do these things faster so that you can progress faster and be the better version of yourself faster than what I did. I went through a journey that was like this and I'm trying to make your journey go more like this. It's going to have bumps, it's going to have hills, but I'm trying to get you to point B faster and smoother than what I did and teach you all of the lessons that I learned so you don't have to make the same mistakes. But when I started counting macros, it was pretty much um, a carb side for me. It was a vegetable, it was a protein, and I was lifting light weights, and that was it. It took me probably about three months to become really consistent with counting macros, understanding them, but I had no one to teach me. Um, everything that um, me and my husband learned, we kind of just went through um, researching and try to learn learn about learning about it ourselves, and then more. Um, 
studies started coming out, more research started coming out about macros, and then groups and communities started growing, and that's how we learned more about macros. I learned how to do If It Fits Your Macros in 2016, and I strayed away from just eating sweet potatoes, brown rice, oatmeal, chicken breast, green beans, and salad at that time point, and then I started eating everything and anything that would fit my macros. So basically what I've been trying to do when I teach macros to people is how to incorporate the weightlifting portion so they're not doing cardio only so that they're getting the physique that they are, um, you know, highly desiring and also teaching them how to be able to eat pizza, cupcakes, brownies, Chinese food, Italian food, uh, Mexican food, sushi, whatever. You can eat whatever you want on your macro plan but for me it was not easy in the beginning once I got it it clicked but it took me about three months to become very consistent on hitting my macros because I was going it alone um, with this program I have been trying to teach people in one month what it typically takes me to teach one person one-on-one -on -one for three months um, and I know the information has been a lot but you guys really do not understand um, how many um, strides and how much progress that you guys have um, made doing the macro plans but you truly can eat whatever you want. So you just have to pick the portion size. So if you wanna have pizza, you may not be able to put in five slices of pizza in your MyFitnessPal. You may only be able to do two or three and you may need to eat less carbs and less fat in another, por another part of your day, but that is where the aware eating and the portion control comes into place. If you feel like you cannot um, get those items in then you need to stick to more of the bro style and get more of the filling lower calorie high fiber foods and stick to more um, of your clean eat foods so lean more towards the 80 to 100 percent of your clean eat foods if you are struggling to get the portion control which will all come from you so the portion control and the accountability will ultimately come down to you because you you will be the person opening the refrigerator up. You will be the person picking the Oreos off the shelf in the store. You will be the person that will decide, am I going to grab one slice of pizza out of this box or am I going to have two slices of pizza? But the portion part comes down to you because you have to decide, am I going to use my macros on one slice of pizza, have some green beans on the side, also have a salad on the side, or am I gonna use a huge chunk of my macros, eat four slices of pizza because I'm a smaller person, I've got less macros, and then have a meal that you may ultimately kind of have to skip because you don't have enough macros. But it takes time to become um, con committed and consistent with your macros because it's all about you know how far can you go and you basically be able to reel yourself back in um, that's like why I was I was saying the other day on Christina's comment um, like she was like I went to Panera they put the bread in the bag and I couldn't take it I have days that I cannot avoid that that bread that comes in the Panera bag or those kettle chips that are still not good for you. I will tell them at the counter, just keep the chips because I might say, okay, I'm going to put them on the car in my seat. I'm going to roll the bag up. I'm going to take the chips to my kids. And the next thing I know, I'm three lights down the street and I'm opening up that bag and I ate another eight grams of fat another 30 carbs that I could have used for something else that filled me up. So instead of me using those carbs to maybe make um, a sandwich at home, I've got extra fat that could have went to cheese or peanut butter or a piece of chocolate. I ate it on this little bag of chips that weighs one ounce and it's got like 15 chips in it. And you guys know 15 chips and eight grams of fat, it's not gonna do anything for you. But you just have to be able to start to have control over the choices that you make 
and it's not always easy. So if you find yourself struggling with the 20%, you know, getting those not so healthy food items in, you may need to limit them until you get to the point that you have uh, more control over the portion sizes, being able to only pick two cookies versus, you know, 10 Oreos or whatever out of the container but it really will come down to um, self-control that you have to practice over and over and over again I have lots of times where I'm like I'm only gonna use my macros for this and the next thing I know I might use them for something else and then I'm stuck not having as many macros as I like and then I just have to keep adjusting as I go but in the beginning it was not easy um, in the first month I think I lost maybe with the macros I think I lost like three pounds but physically I looked like I lost seven pounds so most people they typically look like they have lost double the pounds visually or physically than what they have actually lost on the scale because you end up replacing fat with muscle and then your body just shrinks in a whole bunch more so for women and men one of the biggest things they'll see is their waistline go in you know you have less of the pot belly less rolls hanging over because everything just shrinks in but with the food it takes practice to become consistent it takes practice um, with planning out your macros too so another thing that I do is I plan out what I'm going to eat the morning of I already know what foods I have prepped what foods are available and I know if I eat anything outside of that I'm going to be off track or I know if we're going to Olive Garden with people at work or something the next day, I go to the Olive Garden website, I figure out what I'm going to eat, I track it for the next day, and I eat that, and then I leave the rest of the stuff alone. And if I feel like I'm going to have a hard time when I go somewhere, if I'm there with someone that I know, I'm like, please... Do not let me get more than one breadstick. If you see me get an, another breadstick, say something to me. So sometimes even me, after having been doing this for a long time, um, I still have to exhibit self-control so that I don't fall back into the same habits that I used to have. Um, but it definitely takes practice. It definitely takes time to become more consistent. And I did not become a beast in the gym overnight, but I had to keep going. I had to keep putting um, one step in front of the other and keep pushing and pushing because if I gave up, the only thing that was going to happen for me is I was going to be um, unsatisfied. I was going to have to start all over again and I was going to be miserable being um, in the place that I am and that I was in. And sometimes you just have to think, you know, where would I be if I was consistent for two weeks? Weeks. Where would I be if I was completely consistent for 21 days? So sometimes you have to challenge yourself and see how much progress could you actually make if you hit your macros every single day, if you lifted five days out of the week, you did three to four days of cardio for two weeks straight, no cheats, not going over on your macros and not going under on your macros. Like think about in your that in your head. Visualize what your results may look like in the mirror and or on the scale if you were completely consistent. And those types of thoughts of pushing yourself forward are what you really have to lean to when you want to give up. You have to visualize where would I be if I wasn't, you know, sneaking some extra chocolate in my, you know, desk. Where would I be if I wasn't eating extra cookies and not tracking them? Where would I be if I had hit 96 ounces of water a day? Where would I be if I didn't skip out on the two cardio sessions that I know, knew that I should have done, but I was tired you know, at the end of the day? But you have to think about how bad do you want it and are you willing to do what it takes to get there? Everybody wants to lose weight. Um, you know, everybody 
you know, this I'm saying this in the sense of people that are overweight and not are not at their goal. But everyone, everybody wants to have the body of their dreams. There's a lot of men that want to have more muscles and be more cut up. There's a lot of women that want to have a smaller waist and have nice curves, you know, a nice shape to them. Not everybody, you know, that's a woman wants to be muscular and cut up or whatever. But everybody has a body goal that they really want. And people do want it, like they truly do. But some people just want it more than others at different times. So you have to find your time. You have to find your window of opportunity and inspiration and just really go for it. Because if not, you'll be back in the same place. You'll be wishing you would have done something. You'll sit back and go, dang, in June, I wish I would have went harder. Or you'll look back when you're getting ready to get ready for a trip next year and you'll say, I wish I would have worked out all winter. I wish I would have ate, you know, closer to my macros, lifted a little bit more, sweat a little bit more. And I don't want you guys to be in that place of regret where every three months or two months or six months you're starting all over again. You know, I spent, you know, 20 something years of my life being that way and it was never like I was under I was average and then I gained weight and I wanted to get my life back together I spent my entire life overweight and all I wanted to do was to be average and fit in and I was lazy at points um, I definitely was there were times that I wanted to give up there were times that I did give up but when that window of opportunity came to me like I completely I completely went for it like I was completely relentless like I did not give up because I wanted it so bad I could taste it and then once I could see it and visualize it for myself I, I didn't let anything get in the way um, you know people would be like oh just eat this and oh another another serving of cake you know that's not that bad blah, blah. I was laser focused on what I wanted and I wanted it bad enough and I wanted it more than other people so you just have to really think about um, where you want to be are you willing to give up some things to get there um, the one thing that I share with everybody about competing when I was like should I compete should I not I don't want to lose any more weight I don't want to eat less I'm like dang I'm gonna to have to cut my macros I'm like god do I really really want to do this but I'm like man I want to show myself that I can do this I want to show other women that are obese that they can compete that they can go from being you know almost 300 pounds and get on the stage at 120 pounds and and rock the bikini the heels muscles everything but I'm like dang I don't feel like eating less and my husband looked at me and he said the food is going to be there so for you guys it's the same thing if the food is the problem for you the food is going to be there when you hit your goal and you can start reverse dieting which we talk about in macros 102 but when you hit your goal and you start reverse dieting where you add food back in the food is there I went um, 11 months on and off last year um, basically dieting. What you guys are not doing is dieting. You basically are getting your nutrition in check to hit your goals. I was dieting because I was eating at extreme levels of macros to get my physique down to 10% for the stage. But when I was done, the food was there. The same food that I wanted every single day, I got the day after the show. And when I got it, it wasn't even as good as I thought it would be. Some of it was, but like, you know, me having like indigestion and feeling sick and eating the fat stuff. And like, one of the things I wanted was Buffalo Wild Wings and I got it. And like, it's been like seven months. I got the wings. They were so gross because they weren't cooked right. You know, it wasn't like they, you know, Buffalo Wild Wings just happened to suck after seven months. I just happened to go to the restaurant on a day where they weren't that good. And I'm like, dang, this is what I waited for. And then me and my, my husband had the conversation of, I told you the food is still going to be there. The same cupcake place around the corner is still going to be there. The same pizza place that has been your favorite place for three years, it's still going to be there when you go to have a cheat meal down the road or you start reverse dying like all that stuff is going to be there but can you give up um 
can you give up you know four percent of your day to get your exercise in can you give up going to some of those places to get to your goal and have like the the most amazing feeling the best life possible and to ba basically be able to like you know bask in the success of you having stuck to your macros and hitting your goal you just have to think about how bad do you want it and are you are you really ready and willing to do the things that need to be done for you to get there so um, but that's basically what I wanted to share with you guys tonight it's not easy um, but I'm trying to make it as easy for you guys as possible but in the beginning I didn't do flexible dieting there was no halo top I wasn't making pizza, I wasn't making donuts, I wasn't making protein pancakes, I certainly wasn't eating, um, you know, macro-friendly nachos, any of that stuff, um, but I definitely was not doing that stuff in the beginning, but it takes consistency, like you guys are just three and a half weeks in, this is just the beginning, so once you get the confidence, once you guys get more consistency under your belt, um, it gets easier and then you'll look back and you'll think, dang, you know, um, I wish I would have done that earlier, but there's definitely a learning curve. I have heard from a lot of people on the challenge that they're doing really, really well. Macros are the best thing. They can get the best of both worlds. Um, but there's just a curve for people just depending on where you were physically with workouts and where you were with um, your nutrition. But the nutrition is number one. If the workouts are killing you, start with the food first. That's what I did even before, you know, I started doing the macro adjustments and stuff. But stick with the food first. Um, get everything together um, with the food and the rest of the stuff is basically you know the enhancers to your plan um, there's a question here what is shredding and do you eat carbs while doing it so shredding is just a term that people throw around when they're basically dropping body fat percentage when it is done for um, a bikini competition physique competition or a figure competitor competition um, it is done at an extreme level I do coach people that are competitors but I don't coach people um, to shred in the way that competitors shred unhealthily for um, stage uh, competitions um, like in, in this challenge so when I shred um, like right now I'm shredding because I am slowly cutting carbs. I am slowly um, cutting fat for a summer physique for myself because I put on, um, I did a bulk in the winter and I put weight on over six months time. So I'm doing a slow shred. Um, you guys are all shredding. because Well, not everybody. There's some people that are doing, um, there are some people that have already lost what they wanted to lose so far in the challenge and they're at their maintenance level. And there are some people that are putting on muscle. Um, and then some people are shredding fat only and some people are shredding fat and muscle. So I like cover all of those categories. So everybody has different macros for their specific goals but most of you guys 90% of you guys are shredding because your goal is to lose um, body fat percentage and or weight so you guys are shredding but when you shred for a competition um, it is at an extremely um, it's really bad it's at a, a really extreme level um, it's something that you only do um, over a period of 12 to 20 weeks and when you get that ultimate stage look and you hit your peak week which, which is one week before the show um, that physique typically only lasts you two weeks um, that's how extreme the dieting is that's what people um, in the nutrition and fitness world call um, getting ready for a show they're dieting down so when you hear me say the word diet or dieting down that means extreme um, most women will get to where they're eating under 1200 calories um, but it is a plan that is slow and controlled and monitored by a nutritionist but it does come with cutting all protein carbs and fat um, carbs are the most extreme and you have to reverse diet out or you can gain weight um, really really quickly I'll be going over it in the macros 102 
um, and then you know how like a reverse diet is done right um, but it you really shred down to extreme levels with your carbs and those levels depend on how high your carbs are when you start so a quick example two women that are 150 pounds one may be able to maintain their weight on carbs that are about Mm, I would say like 145. The other one may be able to main her t maintain her carbs um, for her weight at 245 grams. So when they both go to a competition, they may be the same body fat percentage, same weight, age, height, but one has a metabolism that is higher than the other. The one that has the lower metabolism will have to diet down to very low levels. Um, with carbs as opposed to the one that is already over 200 carbs per day. Um, but the person that ends up getting extremely low um, is the person that will experience the most fatigue, the most side effects. Um, but I'm talking about like dieting down to dangerous levels. Um, and then I'll, I will be going over the difference of what a low carb diet is and what a no carb diet is and why a no carb diet is not sustainable. Um, but I'll go over that in the macros 102, but the shredding is like really, really extreme and it shouldn't be done without someone that is a, um, fitness professional because most of the people in this challenge um, are trying to get down um, ultimately like in the 20% body fat range when I'm talking about extreme dieting like what I did you get down to the 5 to 10% range so that's extreme shredding um, but unless you're ready to do a competition it's something that you definitely don't want to do it's not sustainable um, and then your metabolism can endure a lot of damage but if you guys have any other questions about my macro journey, um, just post those under this thread today. And I hope you guys have a great evening.